my feeling is that the human psyche may well be multiple, that the illusion of self, and I call it an illusion, an illusion of self is what gets us into trouble. We have the sense that we're a singularity, but I can demonstrate over and over again in working with people that oftentimes maybe two, three, four parts of them are speaking in the same sentence, uh, that you can hear the, mm, the presence of these parts but we have sort of a, a final common pathway, which is called the voice structure or the body movement. So it's as if people make the assumption that they are in a singularity of beinghood, when indeed it's easy to demonstrate to people that they have many more beings inside than just one. I used to say, and I still do in my conference work, there are many, many eyes and ears sitting in this room, you know, far more than the number of bodies. You have a number of eyes and ears. I have a number of eyes and ears. And we, the outer mind may be totally oblivious to their cognitions and their experiences of the same material. But as you begin to find ways to expand, to sort of pull the camera eye back further, or open the iris up to be able to see more and more of what's mm -hmm. going on, you, you begin to discover these components and take advantage of them. Now, Classically, the Freudians, the Jungians refer to notions such as archetypes or mm -hmm. the ego, the superego, these structures within the subconscious. You're suggesting something different, beings mm -hmm. within. Yes, uh, I don't consider them, uh, I consider them uh, highly circumscribed and, uh, and integrated in and of themselves. They have a content and a, and a uh, sort of a history uh, and they stay configured within that. Uh, the idea that subpersonalities are beneath the personal level of the psyche and at the bidding call of the personal level is, is an absurdity from my uh, point of view. If anything, the outer level is way down on the totem pole. This is one of the great spiritual realizations one has as one matures, is that the outer level, one's you know, most personal sense of self, is not numero uno. Mm -hmm. It's way down in the totem pole of these, of, of what I call an internal community. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like an internal community. And whether or not this is an exact representation of the human psyche at the unconscious levels, it's a good working hypothesis. It's a good way to go in and begin to take on these forces, which really act quite autonomous, mm -hmm. quite independent of who and what we think we are. Particularly, we don't know that if we're living a relatively unconscious life and relatively uh, sort of sleepy, you know, going through life, doing the nice things and the right things and so on. We don't bump up against it until we come into either major stress in life or we come up against a life-threatening illness. Then we begin to understand we're not in charge, we haven't been in charge, and that there's something else operating that we have to get in touch with. Mm -hmm. you know, along this line. So this is a good opening to beginning to explore and probe. Uh, these forces that I'm stating are like entities, mm -hmm. but not discarnate in the sense that they're, they come from the Pleiades or something like that, or that they come from somebody else who died. I don't believe that at all. I believe that we're a rich composite of what I call patternings and forces, and that these just as the personality is a pattern of energy, these are patterns of energy also, and some of them are far more resourceful and far richer in their content than is the outer level. And the research you mentioned earlier su mm. suggests some striking things, that I if one personality comes to the fore, allergy patterns may change, mm -hmm. or other definite physiological mm -hmm. characteristics, mm -hmm. uh, eye coloring might change, mm -hmm. things like this, that, that suggest that these subpersonalities or, or autonomous energies have quite a bit to do with our uh, wellness. Well, in my my exploration over the years, the most dramatic shifts in, in illness that I've ever encountered were people who underwent a total change in their consciousness, uh, whether it's as if they were quote unquote born again, mm -hmm. and uh, a new, whole new being was present, even though the name and the historical data is still part of the memory bank, there's an entirely different energetic that you're dealing with. Uh, 
And uh, of course, that material you just referred to about multiple personality is some startling material that talks about the consciousness that's in charge of the body determines the body's response to stimuli, to whatever. And I've used the examples of, uh, I mean, when they can test one personality and it's in, and they can come up with diabetes and, they, and it carries a certain patterning and they test it when another uh, personality is in charge of the psyche, or I call it, it's like an entity. They don't find the diabetes. You begin to wonder what is primary tissue and disease, or is something about consciousness, the mystery, the profound mystery of being, and conscious of being, and what is the relationship between mind and matter, uh, and the, and you, you know, all of this is bringing us right to the very threshold that a conscious state changes the whole possibility of what a body responds to. So I've often thought that some of the more dramatic healings, quote unquote, that I've ever encountered wasn't because I did something uh, to them per se, to the body tissue, but that some psychological induction took place. It's as if the pattern or the part of them that was tied up in the conflict and that which was leading to the disease and participating in the disease patterning died and something else pops in and it doesn't carry that patterning and the disease dissolves. Mm -hmm.